have you ever heard the old saying that the only thing that never changes is change? Like I've it's the it, only yeah. thing that it's the only thing stable in life is change. Yeah. It's no matter what you're, no matter what happens, life changes, everything changes. And so we as humans tend to be stuck in comfort and what we're used to and the same. And we don't want to, we, you know, just the way our brains are wired, we look for things that are similar to what we've known in the past, right? <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and lab coat agents, to another webinar to discuss the future of our industry, essentially. But I think today, as we were just discussing offline and we were discussing through text a little while ago, I think it's important to really discuss what is going on in our industry and more specifically how that is going to impact 2023 and impact potentially where we're going with this whole blockchain conversation that we started six months ago. And so uh, if you've been following along, you know that there has been consistent evolution of what's happening uh, from our first conversation back in June to where we are today. And um, so I think I would love uh, ladies to, to talk about kind of maybe just a little bit of a recap of where, where we have come uh, to date and then kind of where you think we're going based on what's happening in our industry. Awesome. Thanks for having us here, Jeff. Good to see you. Um, so this year has brought a lot of change for us as a company. And a lot of that's because you forced us to like say our ideas out loud and we're like, hmm, what works, what doesn't work. So we're super grateful for a, an amazing year with you. I know we've been filming for six months with you. Um, definitely a conversation took us some time. So I feel like We've been buddies all year. Um, I would say that we the market has changed, right? And we've had to all adapt um, and do things to survive, right, in this market. So I think in in sense in the blockchain sense of it, we're going to basics. Like we're stripping down the car to the chassis. We're even like literally doing that at home with our product and how we build. Like what is the bare essential, right? There were a lot of extras and everybody has their idea of everything that blockchain can do for them um, and all these companies that are building on top of us. And we're taking it down to like raw essentials. What is the bare minimum that people need to do to survive, to future-proof their business, to like just put the fortress around them, right? And to make sure that they can go into 2023 with a winning strategy where they're not losing money, they're making money and putting food on the table. So that has impacted us as well this last year. Awesome. So, you know, I mean, let's, let's do a little quick recap of, of where we are. And, um, you, know, you know, in the beginning, we were talking about how this was years out. Now we're talking about like maybe months. Um, where are we? Where are we? Because it's been a month since we've talked. So where are we today as, as the year, you know, kind of winds down? So I think we made some, and we covered this in the last segment, is that we made some big predictions to the Federal Government Technology Committee. We presented those findings um, this year. So we made those predictions last year in 2021. This year in 2022, a month ago, we presented that. And I think what we've seen is that this is big boy time for blockchain. This is like, you got to follow the rules. We've seen everything shake out. We're seeing that constantly with Sam bank and fraud, right? The guy who's just stole billions of dollars. We know that regulation has come that says NFTs are most likely securities based on those probes. We know that there's been a ruling and then it's been upheld that cryptocurrency is a security. So it's really awesome for me as the compliance super nerd in the room to see all this happen and be like winning, like everything that we said was going to happen because I'm a licensed investment banker is happening. And then on top of that, it's time for rules, right? If you are crypto junk and crypto noise, please step aside. Let the big boys and girls come to the table. Like this is adult conversation now of how we're going to use blockchain as a fundamental tool to do better business. And I think the proof is in the pudding. Goldman Sachs was on CNBC. So CNBC is like the hoitiest, hoitiest, right? Like of the law abiding, like on Wall Street, right? And on their news podcast, news show, they were talking about Goldman Sachs as 200 people internally to their firm 
that's building blockchain. I love stories like that because we are one of those, right? We work with the largest private equity firm in the world to figure out blockchain for real use for capital markets and real estate. And that's where we are. So it's really our turn to shine. It's our turn to provide solutions to realtors and to bankers, mortgage brokers. So that's where we are today. Couldn't be happier about that. What is your what is what is the current prediction as to when this is really going to infiltrate and and be almost like an everyday thing uh, for real estate agents and and really just the real estate industry? So it's it's in the next few months. We can't build fast enough. I think Sheila says the best. Like people are like, "How's it going in consortia?" Like we literally can't get code out the door fast enough because we have states, we have counties, like the largest. If you can imagine what you're reading about in the news about student lending, right? Like all these issues, that is on our plate. Like the human NFT, doing this for banks, like hundreds of banks, that is coming. And that's going to be, I think a lot of it is going to be in the background and consumers won't even see it. There is going to be a revolution that we are building and that's where consumers control their own financial information, their own personal information. So I think the most adventurous blockchain enthusiasts that are out there are going to be seeing this live in the next few months. Um, and then I think mainstream, people are going to hear about it, right? Like, oh, I have my, my own personal NFT. What? Where do I get that? So that's coming very quickly. Pretty pumped about that. What does that look like uh, for for our industry, though? So when you talk about the consumer having their own NFT, I think a lot of us that, that are uneducated, and that's that's most of us for the record. So don't don't take offense to that comment. Uh, but you, when you think may, either a, you have no idea what NFT is, or b, you think of it as artwork. And so, what does it mean for a homeowner or for a potential homeowner to have their own NFT? Like, how is that going to impact us specifically? So I think at first it's going to be pretty chill. It's not going to be life altering. It's about warming everyone up to the idea. And that's what I've learned in the last year. Like even the things that I take for granted, like the tiniest little things I could say or think or do is like a big deal. Once you get it out there, like people will ask like questions that I have like leapfrogged over like a decade ago. And so I think for the consumer, just being able to go on and register and mint their personal token, mint their token for their property. Just that small action is a quantum leap into, I had my team, I suggested, we, we have a lot of fun, we like each other, to watch the show Year Million, right? What does the future of humanity, of robots, of AI, of big data look like? So I think that is a quantum leap. It's so tiny. It seems so tiny, right? Just to, I'm going to go claim my NFT. I'm going to pay 20 bucks and go claim my NFT. It's actually a really big deal. It's a huge deal. And I think that's where we start and that's why it's going to look, that's, that's what it's going to look like at first. What's the name of the show? It's called Year Million. You have to be a super nerd to find it apparently is what my CIO told me. He's like, uh, he's like, I had to scroll through Disney plus for 30 minutes to find this. How did you find, how did this ever show up on your radar? <laughs> so it's on Disney plus it's um, a Nat Geo program because of course Disney owns Nat Geo now. Um, it's called Year Million. So it's like a more gentle form of Black Mirror. Black Mirror is pretty like aggressive. Some of the things on there like makes me make me want to cringe. This one is more thought provoking. They ask some pretty big questions about where we go as society, humanity. Um, what is it going to mean to be human even? Like they like tell us what the future looks like with robotics and AI. Do we live forever? Like things like that, because we're able to download into the metaverse. And I know there's a lot of buzz around metaverse, but like, seriously, you think about like where this is all going and it's it, like, it, we're going to do a show um, for this other financial group. And they're like, what do you, what's the question you want to ask? And it's the, can you stop technology? Like the answers in the question, right? The yeah. definition of technology is like, like this evolution of science, right? You so the answer is in the question, can you stop evolution? You can't stop it. It just is going to happen. And that that TV show, if people have like time to kill over the holidays, it's it's kind of cool to see what we're building, not just us. I mean, society in general. 
what was the uh, what was the, the the nasty one that you said that that did it depicts it differently? You said Black Mirror. Black Mirror. Yeah. Where's that one? Where's that one at? I don't. I mean, that one's been around for like eight years, I think. Okay. And that gets pretty dark pretty quickly. Every episode is it's like its own um, its own show, its own like mini movie kind of. So they don't build on each other at all, and you can drop into any one of them. And the first one is the most aggressive, like like uh, sit down, like just know it's going to assault like every one of your senses, but if you can get, or don't even watch the first one, you can watch any of them. No, Jake, Jake says it's on Netflix and, and it brings to mind ready player one, which is another one, which is more VR specific, but mm-hmm. um, it's interesting. It's interesting to watch this stuff. Sheila, I, I see that you, you unmuted. So I, I figure you're going to, mother hen's going to step in and, and, and set the, set the, the world uh, straight here. <laughs> calm it down, Teresa, calm it down. <laughs> It's um, disturbing, to say the least, when you think about the power of technology, when you watch your million. My boys are in college, 22 and 24, and they were very disturbed watching that show with us, with me. Just... um, it's like, do I want that? Is that an invasion of my privacy? Do I want to go to that level? I mean, we talk about everything in our little team and, you know, Teresa getting the nest and just that literally it follows you around and the stuff that the stuff that just normal things that people are getting used to. And I have an EV. So opening my car doors from my phone and I can control the car from my phone kind of thing. So there's just a lot that's coming with technology and we're just literally smack in the middle of all of it with what we're doing with blockchain. We have an EV project on one side. We have a student project on one side. We have a human project on one side. We have a state tax and vehicle records project on one side. And then just the normal blockchain that we've been talking to you about. So it's grown tremendously and the companies that are hiring us as a dev team to build products for them, separate from consortia's first product that we started talking about. Which was real estate. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so let's let's talk about that a little bit. And, and for anybody who's paying attention to this, and, and you might be thinking to yourself, either A, you're completely enamored like I am um, because it's fascinating, or or you're thinking to yourself, what does this have to do with me? Um, and you, you ladies know this because we've talked about this. Obviously, I, I live in that same world, but different product, right? Which is social and branding and it's a marketing mindset, right? But but it's all very relevant there as well, because if mm-hmm. if you don't, if if you ignore the fact that these things are happening and coming, which they are, you're gonna essentially render your business obsolete because you're not going to be able to compete with these this technology and these robots. And and I and and along that same wavelength, that's where like blockchain comes into play here. And what what I tell people, because I build this into my presentation, just so you guys know, even though it has nothing to do with my presentation, I build it in because I want I want my audiences to open up their minds and start looking at the world through a different lens. And that lens of not like I'll pay attention to it later, but more of I better start paying attention because the more knowledge you have about this stuff, the better real estate agent professional it's going to make you um, because it's going to come up in conversation. It's just a matter of when. Is it going to be a month from now? Is it going to be six months from now? Is it going to be a year from now? But if you don't have any clue what a consumer is talking about, you're going to be the one that looks like an idiot. You're going to be the one that loses the opportunity for that transaction. And, and so that's really the lens that I try to focus on here because this is all very complicated. And we've had many off the record conversations where I'm asking uh, Teresa and Sheila, like, I think there was that one conversation where we were talking about the Fed coin and how they're going to go from the bottom up. And I was like, the world's not ready for this. And, and you know, that was exactly my words. And you guys are both like, eh, well, guess what? Uh, tough shit. And that's why they're going to come in from the bottom up with the Fed coin. Mm-hmm. And so let's talk a little bit more about that because I do want to relate this back to real estate specifically uh, because that's where we are, of course. But, you know, so so let's talk about that. Well, what do you think is the most relevant piece as we head into 23 that a real estate agent needs to really focus on in terms of kind of just elevating their knowledge base? Hmm. 
Well, while I, noticed I, did, I didn't give them this question before the, uh, before the webinar. So, so while she's thinking about that, let me touch on something that you were just saying a minute ago yeah. about what's coming and your question to us the last time we talked. So you, have you ever heard the old saying that the only thing that never changes is change? Like I've it's the it, only yeah. thing that it's the only thing stable in life is yeah. change. Yeah. It's no matter what you're, no matter what happens, life changes, everything changes. And so we as humans tend to be stuck in comfort and what we're used to and the same. And we don't want to, we, you know, just the way our brains are wired, we look for things that are similar to what we've known in the past. Right. So when you look at the industrial revolution, and how much the world totally changed with the industrial revolution and then move forward, whatever, 20 years to when the internet came out and all of us who are old enough to remember the internet and the old AOL, you know, getting online and all that stuff, we were like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. This is, you know, and a lot of people didn't go for that. And a lot of those people aren't in business anymore because we went from the books in real estate to all of the listings being online. And then you move from the internet to social media. And the difference between then and social media and what you guys are experts in, and you still see this huge lag of agents who don't wanna do video, don't wanna post every day. I fight her all the time, by the way. She's getting a lot better. <laughs> She's getting a lot better. But um, they don't want to, they don't think they know, have anything to say or they don't know how they're going to look or whatever, but they're still fighting that technology of social media, which is where you're at, right? That's this spot. Well, where we're at is the next spot. <laughs> you know, the next spot is blockchain. The next spot is your bank account, no different than your bank account right now, because you can get on your phone and log into your bank right now and Zelle money or PayPal money or Venmo money. Now you're not sending enormous chunks of money, but you are sending money digitally right now. You're already doing it. In the future, I'm going to be able to zoop to you from my phone and buy a house from you at some point. I mean, that's where, again, the progression of all of this is going, where we'll be able to do everything from our phone or from the Apple Watch. I don't know if you guys know Whoop, but I have a Whoop and it literally reads my body, like tells me how much sleep I've had, how much rest I've had, how much I'm exercising. So just the technology of what's happening, it's all going that way to either be on your wrist or in a uh, on your phone or whatever. And somebody used a whoop when they were training. That's awesome. Um, but I think just understanding that change is inevitable and just go with the flow. Be ahead of the change this time. If anybody here is watching, jump on board with us and get ahead of this change that's coming, that's inevitable, that we've been talking about for six months. So yeah. Teresa can jump in now to answer your question. Em embrace it. Yeah, I love what Sheila said. And talking about Zelle, what's really crazy is we had to do like our um, our corporate documents. And uh, you guys know Consortia has some crazy, stupid valuation Morgan Stanley put on us years ago when we joined the NAR portfolio. Like we had a valuation higher than Uber for the same stage of company before a line of code was ever built. Like I got the valuation, I actually laughed. It was the week of my birthday. I was in Hong Kong and I was like, I had to speak at this thing. And I was like, that's hilarious. Like, I guess that's what Silicon Valley does. We're like, mm, you're worth more. Anyway, so our whole team, we're doing our paperwork and Sheila literally goes and buys her shares and sends me the payment on Zelle. <laughs> and she's like, she did ask me, how do you want this? Like she could have wired the money in, right? But I was like, no, I want this in Zelle to prove a point. Cause like someday this is gonna be in like a Forbes article. Well, how did you buy your, and they, people want to, we'll, we'll just share. We'll be like, oh, we zelled in our payment for our shares, right? <laughs> like the, the biggest thing on my personal balance sheet, I just zelled the money and it's cool, no big deal, right? I mean, I'm talking about me. Sheila's worth a lot more than me. So, um, because I have to buy shares in my own company too, which I need. To, that's happening over Christmas. I have to do my own paperwork. Christmas, I'll put kids out right? 
<laughs> yeah. So what Sheila's saying is, if, if I can add on that, um, I that sounded like a mansplain what I was about to say. I think, look, the Fed coin is coming. Nothing that we're saying now is like conspiracy, even though like, you know, if you asked me three years ago, you're two years ago, people would be like, oh, you're one of those, like you're a QAnon, like, okay, crazy, go sit over there. This is all public. Like the, the fiat, meaning government issued currencies, right? The crypto ones have all been tested now. That's out there. Go find that in the news. You've got Fed now, and we were just on a call with Fed now. Was it this week or last week? I forgot the week. Oh, last week. And Fed now is scrambling because they've now they're at this point where they have to be in front of like they're pushing, they're busting their balls to they're behind, man. And they've got to catch up because you've got FTX, you got the SEC breaking everybody's noses in the space. You've got the fiat coins that were just launched and tested. So when Sheila says, you can sell someone or you're just going to go from your phone and press, boop, Sheila, I'd like to buy that house from you, right? What that means is that the federal government is going to be able to see into your bank account and my bank account. Imagine if you could sit at the top of a well and break a glow stick and drop it all the way down so you could see the bottom or you're about to go spelunking, right? And you go, oh, I see the bottom. That's what they're going to do. That's literally coming you can't stop it. All the biggest banks are on board with it. This is all out there. Go do your research. It's right there on the federal government's page, all the banks that are going to, that are in doing it, right? So if your clients can now go to a website, if they can log into Redfin and make an offer on a property, why do you exist? Why are you here? How do you justify? And I tell this to my kids all the time. I am a ball buster. I'm like, why do you exist? Why are you at my dinner table? Why should I feed you? What's your value as a human being? Hey, mom, it's your fault. It's your damn fault why I'm here. <laughs> hmm. I have amnesia. I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Didn't mean to digress. Sorry. No, you did. And I love it. So like as practitioners, right? As professionals, this is a much deeper esoteric question. How are you going to justify your paycheck? Blockchain, AI, this is not far away. The first AI real estate brokerage will launch next year. I know exactly who's going to do that. I know. Mm, shut my mouth. Going to shut my mouth. Why do you exist as a practitioner? As a loan officer, why are you here? That's, I mean, when the internet was coming, you could say, oh, email's not a real thing. No one's going to look for their property online. That's crazy. Like they want my leather book and they want to come ride around in my car. No, they don't. No, no, they don't. Like you're a terrible driver and your car is really not that nice. Nobody wanted to drive with you ever. Well, like you could, you could say like, oh, how business is changing, right? Now we're at a point, it's really like literally why do you exist? That's a much, that, that is earth shattering. Just okay. asking yourself that question. So then as someone who's asking that question and uh, then what is an answer to someone who let's just say is a part of your brokerage or for example, let's just say somebody, Teresa, that you or Sheila, I know Sheila, you obviously have a big brokerage, um, but Teresa, in your case, somebody that you coach, you look up to or looks up to you and they say, okay, then what do I have to do to make myself exist? Or what am I doing wrong to where I'm not going to exist? So it's really funny is like, I have two identities. Like my agents have no idea what I do in the industry. It's really funny. Like if you, like they can't spell blockchain, like seriously, they would have no idea what I do. So like, it, it's really interesting. They're like, oh, Teresa, my online broker, I don't care about. She just sends me my commissions. So for them, the ones what I think is going to happen is there will be fewer, right? And it's really interesting. Will a sentient being be able to hold a broker's license? Think about it. If you can codify every piece of the law, does the broker even have to exist? If a robot, and this is a prediction in year million in that TV show that I'm referencing, if a robot can write our laws better than us because they can codify, think about like thousands of pages of laws that some that a human has to know, if all of that can be programmed and codified, they're going to be more accurate 
than humans writing laws. Crazy. So to that end, I mean, there are a lot fewer laws, right, in real estate. There are a lot, but fewer. Why, like the people, there might be a human, right, that has to supervise and like turn the power on for the robot. So there are going to be fewer people. So if you're watching this show, chances are like you have a proclivity to like, hmm, I'm going to like evolve as a human. So you'll probably have a job because you'll be working with the robots. That's what I would say. I would say you're one of the people who understands blockchain. So you're, you're going to have a future here. Um, and I think, <clears throat> so what I've told my kids is like, I used to be super Asian and say, you need to be a doctor, a lawyer, right? Like I fell in, it was just really easy to say, you need to Ivy League, say Harvard. And my kids are like two and they're like Harvard, right? <laughs> I've never heard that expression. You need to, you need to be Asian. You need the Asian. <laughs> That's funny. Now I'm telling my kids, okay, if everything you know can be codified, how do you provide a human experience? Mm-hmm. How do you hold someone's hand through a transaction and still know the technology and not be afraid of it? Those are two different sides of the brain, right? One is like the super math nerd side. The other part's like, I know how to talk human as Sheila has tried to teach me over the year. <laughs> That's my advice. If okay, my, let, knew that let, I knew blockchain. Let's go a little deeper on that though, because the way I just interpreted what you just said was that, you know, it's, it's going to be that authenticity um, there, there still is going to be emotion involved in these transactions. And that's where the current state of realist realtors, which is today and, and for the foreseeable future, um, that's where their place is going to be. So what can one do besides obviously being educated and understanding what the hell they're talking about, but what do you think? Like where, and either one of you can answer this, like, what is something that the real estate agent should equip themselves to do better starting today, starting tomorrow. Can I jump in? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I think it's a two-part answer. And I may shock you with what I'm going to say, but I think part one is they need to learn what you're doing. (laughs) Because in the future, what's going to happen is eyeballs. Mm -hmm. It's going to be where are the eyeballs and you are the master. Your group is the master at teaching eyeballs. So if they have not yet dug in and mastered social media with all the things that you make available, if they don't, they're out of business. Number one, just flat, you're out of business because I see it with our friends and our media guys who are the number one YouTubers in Dallas. And they went from zero to a hundred million within their first year with zero ad spend all through YouTube, videos, 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 videos. People love them. People write them letters. Would you be willing to work with me? Hey, would you mind? I'd really appreciate it if you call us. I mean, it's I, I sit in rooms with them sometimes and just hear his calls or hear, hear the messages coming into them or webinars with them. And I'm like, holy mackerel. That to me, because people, people are going to care more about they're not going to, okay, so let, let's divide the line. Many agents, I'm not going to say all, many agents currently are order takers. They maybe haven't been in the business long enough that they haven't um, gone through tough times because a lot of us who've been around a long time have gone through multiple swings and have had to make it through. But they're used to, and especially in the last decade, since we have not had the last crash or a little bit longer, they just take orders and the market's been so good and things have been soaring and literally that that's all they do. They just write a contract, write a contract, write a contract. Well, if the robot can write the contract for you and Teresa jokes, this is what she does. um, If the robot can write the contract for you, then what is your differentiating factor? To me, social media, just like, when social media came out, guess what was the differenti- differentiation for people who got into social media? Experts at the internet. You had to rely on the first technology to scale your second technology, which was social media. It's going to be the same in the future. If you don't rely on the social aspect of really gaining the eyeballs and the focus and all of that, 
you, you won't be able to launch into blockchain. You're going to need both. So they need to work with you and really learn how to hone their skills on getting attention and eyeballs and not having to pay these companies that they're currently paying all their commission or huge commissions and learn how to get attract people, become an attractive character like Russell Brunson talks about in ClickFunnels, become an attractive character and then people will find you. What do they say that people search online for six months before they ever call an agent or ever, you know, go look at their first house? Well, then how much more important is what you do? How much more important is it for you to be the one they see online for six months before they ever call somebody? So that's number one. Then number two is go through our course, follow us online watch these videos we're doing with you and all the other stuff we're doing on the other social channels and just start opening your mind of the fact of it's all coming. And to make clear what Teresa was talking about, Fed now is the payment rail. That means if you imagine PayPal, Venmo, ACH, that's a payment rail. That's where the money's gonna move from, right? The Fed will make a boatload of money having everything move on its rail. Could you imagine Stripe, you pay 2.99% <laughs> per transaction. Could you imagine if the Fed charges a little bit less, but still charges a transaction fee to move on their rail? They're going to make a fortune. Mm -hmm. Then the second part is what Teresa is referring to as the Fed now that they're calling the CBDC and they've already done their first trial and they're already ready to release it. We don't know if they're going to wind up calling it Fed now, since it's the central bank digital currency. Articles are out there about that too. So they have the rail, <laughs> then they have the currency, which is the digital dollar. You don't think that's going to change the world? So Teresa can jump in. Yeah, I think so. So the goal there is to settle immediately, right? The reason why they can crack that glow stick and drop it in and spelunk is so that they can settle money in between, like immediately between both parties. So that's coming in smaller bite-sized pieces and then big chunks because we work with them, right? Through our certified listing process. So if the customer can go on Redfin, write an offer, right? Right now, and they can buy a property with like very, like very little help, right? From an outside party. Um, I think you got to look at, okay, how... How, if you're going to be the listing agent, if you're not working for Redfin and you're listening to this call, how do you build your book of business so that you're ready to settle that quickly, right? Like, so true story, I'm texting with our CIO's wife over the weekend and there's this, a listing agent for this investment property. And she's like, I'm like, well, how soon are we going to close? And she goes, well, they have to put new windows on this building. Like, What's my timeline, right? If the Fed is going to be able to close in the middle of the night, right? Move money. And if county records with us are going to close, like we're going to be able to move this stuff. What are you talking about? You're going to add windows. Like, do you have a timeline? Is it eight months or eight weeks? What are we talking about? So as an agent, you got to know how to package your property for a flawless finish. And anyone from San Francisco out there can attest, like, this is how we do deals. You put it on the market, it's flawless. And you're going to be able to have all title, all records of the property, the appraisal, the home inspection, everything go onto blockchain, right? And you'll be able to see it instantly. If you can move money that quickly, you're going to have to be able to move your product that quickly. And I walked into Tesla a few weeks ago. <clears throat> this guy didn't know his Model X. And I was like, know your product. I busted his ball so hard. He almost pooped his pants. I actually think he did. He took two days off after that. It was so bad. But I was like, know your product. Wow. I'm, and, and I'm an outlier, right? Because I'm in technology and Tesla is nothing more than a data company. It's a computer on a battery, right? It doesn't even have an engine. It's just a computer on a battery. So that, right? When the customer gets used to that experience, I'm always a little bit ahead. Like I've always been a little bit ahead. It's kind of annoying, but like that's coming. And if you as an agent aren't ready to be like, when somebody says, what's your product? What's your timeline? How quickly can you close? It, like, why are you here? If that agent on the other side, I'm like, Christina, when is she going to close? I'm ready to close in three days. Is she? 
the reason for the negotiation and the back and forth is going to come to an end. Robots don't negotiate. Robots just do, right? Program, execute, do. AI, just do, right? When I wake up in the morning and I want my monster, I want it on the counter ready to open. I do not want to wait. It is there, I drink, right? I am probably the closest thing you're going to find to a robot. <laughs> Robots don't want to wait. So again, what's your purpose? Why are you here? Why are you breathing this air? Mm, I don't know. So there's a couple. There's a, a couple comments. First of all, Jamie can can uh, she's living uh, with the 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 male version of Teresa, evidently. Um, <laughs> that's that's funny. Um, but there's a question uh, from Terry that's on Facebook. You guys see that in the chat here? So she says there, there's it's kind of a multi part question. So I'd rather you kind of look glance at that and let's respond to it. And and she mentioned that she just watched Iron Man, so that might have something to do with her uh, <laughs> with her comment or question. Um, but probably also somewhat relevant. Uh, Terry, uh, even though it's a movie, but uh, I'm sure there's there's some level of reality that the producers are, are actually toying around with. So, OK, so this stuff doesn't come out of nowhere when you see it in the movies, like it's already been there's a master plan, right, for like where humanity goes. And there's plenty of documentation on that. That aside. So this thing that you're talking about, the robot the scan, our business partners have the patent for this. They just got issued the patent. So that device in your house that's then going to scan everything, make sure it's Fannie, Freddie, GSE compliance, that's happening today. So yes, that's all. They what, what kind of, what is it? Is it a, is it a vacuum as she suggests? What is it? So my understanding of the patent is anything. So any robot that's scanning the house, right? Your vacuum, it's not there to clean your house. Do you know that guys? Like they're not offering you this vacuum for 149 on Walmart special because they want to clean your house. Once you connect that app to your phone, it's reading every detail about your house and then selling your data. That's what's really happening. I just put the Google Nest in. I have the ring on my front door now. Like I finally did that this weekend because I'm like, I give up. I give up. You can have it. I have two robots to clean my floor, right? So that is, it's, it's the data play. So all the defects about your house. Yeah. Go read your mortgage statement. You got, or your mortgage contract. You guys, the mortgage companies have the right to come into your house at any point they want. So oh, yeah. I don't think anybody's ever read that line. Yeah. Super nerd here. Yes. Yes. I have know your product, right? I take my own medicine, know your product, know what you're building. So if they have the right to come into your house, you think they aren't finding other ways. Are they going to, they, they don't have enough manpower to come into my house. But the technology is there where they can get the information about the house. So yeah, each one of these, for, for us, we're not going on vacuums. That's not what we do. It's when you, the agent, order this report and you want it done, then we put the report on the blockchain. I'm talking, I'm talking two things, right? I'm talking about the product that Consortia has, and I'm talking about other stuff that exists, right? So I just want to kind of put a crowbar separation between the two. Like they're about to touch, but we kind of keep them separate, right? So each piece of data is a non-fungible token, meaning it goes on the ledger. Once it goes on, it cannot be tampered with. It can't be altered. It's on there. It's just like putting an, an entry in and a spreadsheet, but then locking the spreadsheet so that when I send it to Grant and Ben, do your chores, they can't edit, right? The, the spreadsheet, they can't change it to say like, oh, only clean two windows today instead of all of them, right? Uh, uh, Terry, thank you for already proving me wrong. I, I said nobody's ever read that line. She says she's read it. So, damn it, there's two of you now. Thank you, Terry. I owe you a Starbucks. <laughs> DM me on Facebook. Thank you. Ah, that's great. That's great. Um, all right. So, you know, this is again all, all very, very fascinating. And, and, um, you know, the year is winding down. We're heading into 2023. I want to hear what your predictions are for what the impact is going to be in 2023. What is the one thing that you think from your from consortia's perspective, from blockchain's perspective, from the impact on real estate's perspective? Because, you know, I think, Teresa, you said it, or maybe it was you, Sheila, that, that the numbers are going to go down, aka the realtor count. That's going to happen probably as a product of lack of business, 
partially. They can't yes. afford, it doesn't make sense to maintain their realtor license. Um, or they're going to have to go get a real job because they can't pay their bills. Uh, but I think part of that is also the adaptation of w whether they're willing to adapt to the things that we're talking about. Uh, but so if someone's watching this, Jamie, Terry, uh, Terry on Facebook, and I'm sure there's others. What would be one thing that you predict in 2023 is going to have an impact on their business that they did not see coming in 2022? Or that doesn't exist in 2022? I get so I think for me, like coming out of 2021, it was really obvious that the financial markets were going to like hit us like a two by four, right? Like Tommy boy, where he's like, Oh, right. Not so much here, not so much here, but right here. Right. So <laughs> like with my best friends, our team, we all saw it coming. Right. And we've been like bracing for impact for a while now. I think it caught a lot of people by surprise. And I think what's funny for next year, I don't see any changes is what's really interesting is interest rates, as we know, are going to continue to go up. However, prices aren't going to come down by a lot. Lawrence Yoon, who's the head economist for NAR, said 6% correction, about 6% correction next year. Um, and that's, that's not the market crashing. Let's keep in mind something. That is not what that means. That just means that housing affordability has to be adjusted because interest rates are going up, right? And I, and I quiz Ben like a mother trucker as we drive in the car. I'm like, if interest rates go up, what happens to the value of the houses? Oh, they have to come down, right? There has to be like this equilibrium point where the two intersect. So we're going to see more of the same is what's really interesting next year. So what does that mean? You still don't have enough housing supply. Housing starts aren't keeping up with demand. And that's a problem that we've been in for 15 years. So there's still a lot of demand. Um, we're going to see more buy down products in the mortgage space. So that's when the seller gives a credit to buy the rate down for two or three years, right? The best of the agents are cranking out deals right now because they know how to use this financial synthetic tool. So we're going to see more of that in the next year. From the industry, from like the backside, right? Like of how these mortgages, how these mortgage companies are operating, you're going to see more consolidation. They just aren't making money. So these mortgage companies are hemorrhaging. Did you know, guys, that it costs $11,000 to originate a loan from a bank side, from the loan originator? Mm -hmm. They are eating it by the tune of 600 bucks to 800 bucks per file. Every bank, every lender is losing money. So when you think not, about- That's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. So how do, you, how do you make up for that, right? The lenders have to adopt more technology. The le Nobody's telling us consortia no. It's craziest thing. Like nobody tells us no. I'm used to people being like, again, I'm going to make a Tommy boy reference. You know, like when he finally makes his first sale and he's like thinking they're going to say no, we never get told no. It's the most bizarre thing. So the lenders are going to more, they're going to have to gravitate toward AI, business intelligence and blockchain as a result. Real estate is nothing more than a financial transaction. If you are an agent and you are fooling yourself in anything but that, take a good hard look at every single one of your deals and realize it is a financial transaction. There just happens to be a pretty realtor in the middle of this who like, like does the handholding for the relationship, right? We're like, oh, come along. It's a financial transaction. So my prediction for the next year is nothing changes. It actually remains, it, it's the next iteration of this year. Higher interest rates, fewer houses that are available on the market, and more gravitational pull toward technology to bring that cost of loan origination down. Sheila. Hmm. I agree with what Teresa's saying. And by the way, you think that rates are going to continue to go up when prognosticators like Barry Habib are predicting they actually go down a little bit. Jeremy Powell is, he, he's got a lot of weight on him. He didn't take inflation seriously enough in, for two years during COVID. He's got a lot of egg to wipe off his face right now. And if he screws up 
the interest rates now. And if he pulls them down too quickly, we are going to be in a super long wave of inflation. Now, if that happens, you know what the cure is? It's the digital dollar that's going to come in and replace all your dollars. So I'm going to hedge this one. Fine. Interest rates get lower. We go through hyperinflation. We, we are probably technically in that if you take into account like all the things it costs to go through my day, right? Instead of just like the little things that they count because inflation doesn't count actual cost of living. They take all that out, right? Okay, fine. I'll hedge that. If Barry Habib is right, then fine. They slam in the digital dollar. They reset the currency. They reset our federal debt, our $32 trillion of debt. And that all gets reset. Go read about what happens in Argentina every decade. Mm -hmm. Go read what that looks like and then figure out what money is going to be left in your bank account. That's what I'll say. That's my hedge. If you want to talk about if that interest rate goes down, then that's the solution. Interesting. Uh, there, there could be some conspiracy that that might be intentional. That's weird. Hmm. Mm. I mean, and by down, I don't think anybody's predicting twos, threes, even fours again, I think, you know, but but I think maybe into the fives again or something like that, which is down compared to where it's been over the last six months. I'm literally closing a loan as we're talking. I have a closing that's happening. I locked their rate on November 28th and her mortgage rate is 3.4%. On a what? One year balloon? <laughs> <laughs> tell me tell me you're a mortgage nerd without telling me you're a mortgage nerd. No, it's a it's a 30 year no, it's a 2 1 buy down. But how crazy is that? I mean, just even reading that on the closing disclosure, that's like unbelievable. Yeah, that's an, that's an insane rate in today's world. Yeah. So, uh, and, and just a shameless plug, I will be interviewing Barry on Friday, Friday morning here in Lab Code Agents. So if you want to get his take on where rates are going, tune into that or watch that that recording. Um, Sheila, what's, what's, your, what's your take since I interrupted? No, no worries. I, I think the difference with Teresa and I is we sit on every side of it. You know, a lot of people that you probably talk to or people that we even talk to, and we we actually discuss this as a team, is that they're sitting in one spot. They're either sitting as a realtor or broker. They're either sitting as a mortgage person or, you know, title or whatever. We sit in all the seats. Not only do we sit in all the seats and are we licensed in all the seats, including the investment banking with Teresa, we're dealing with the Fed. We're dealing with the GSEs. We're dealing with all of the companies that Teresa knows from NAR that she's been a part of for all these years that are building all the technology of the things that we've been referring to that are layering all of those pieces of technology onto consortia. So we're... We are literally the foundation where all this other technology is being layered on. So we're being approached by companies inside our industry and outside our industry. So we're seeing a lot of things a lot of people aren't. And I'm not saying that that's making us um, skeptical or um, not optimistic about the future of the United States, <laughs> but we're seeing what's going to have to happen to get us to where ultimately the powers that be are planning to take us. And part of that is exactly what Teresa just described. And I don't care how you describe it or how you want to categorize it. Ultimately, increase, decrease, crash, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how you want to describe what's going to wind up happening. They're going to get us on the rail. They're going to get us on the digital dollar. It's going to happen. So I think the bigger, more important thing for people to think about is quit focusing on this and focus on this. Focus on where, think about this. When the Rothschilds created banks, Right? By the way, the Rothschild is the wealthiest family in the world. Yes. They, they, Teresa always jokes that they own 50 cents of every dollar, you know? So when the banking industry was created, if you were that family and you had all the money to create a system like this, 
and you had the power to choose how that system ran, would you worry about all of this little stuff or would you be thinking about the big overall picture because you were backing it all? If they're the money backing everything, if they're the one money sending the money to rescue Florida when Florida had the hurricanes, or if they're sending the money to fix the cities that get wiped out from fire or whatever, don't you think that they have a say in how all of this plays out? And you would too, if you were the one backing it all financially. So if their goal, which they have made very, very clear and have told us in the news media, it is public information that they are going to do this. Don't be so naive thinking, oh, this is all going to stay the same. They're going to change the rates and we'll all be fine. And there's going to be no decrease. We've literally, us as a team, we've moved out of the stock market. We've moved out of the crypto market. We've moved our money in a place where we can buy properties or we're all buying properties and investing in hard assets to prepare for what's coming. That's just what we as a team are all doing individually. And we have very specific talks about dollar, gold, silver, crypto, all of the different money supplies. Where do you put your money? How do you protect yourself? And then how do you as a functioning practitioner prepare for that to be sustainable throughout it all? As a licensed investment banker, this is not to be construed as investment advice. <laughs> Seek your financial advisor. She can say, I'm not a, I'm not a licensed investment banker, so. <laughs> uh, actually, I think we should tee that up as a, one of the conversation pieces for the next one in January. Um, I think that's an interesting, you just, you just opened up a whole different can of worms there. Um, but, but this is interesting because I think most, you know, again, most of the webinars, you know, here in Lab Coats are very real estate centric. Uh, you know, about lead conversion or CRMs or, you know, social media, things like that. More now topics. And I do believe that very few people, the humans in general, are paying attention to anything that doesn't affect them now. And that's that's a big mistake that we as a human race tend to make. Um, we focus on living in the now. And, and I think some of the best uh, you know, the, the 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 best are the ones who are, like you said, like kind of educating themselves and preparing themselves. And maybe this is even, you know, selfishly, I want to have this conversation because I want to know what I need to be doing with my money. Uh, you know, and I, and I want to make my own educated decisions based on what you guys are telling us. I mean, here's the thing, folks. I mean, Teresa and Sheila don't have some little crystal ball sitting in front of them. Um, they're just very educated about this stuff. Like, like Sheila said, you're having conversations with people that are making some pretty big headway on, on where the world is going. And, and most of us are just living in, I, I call it fantasy land, it, but I, ironically, it's really the other way. That's the fantasy land. But, but yet, but yet really where we live today is, is in, in future mindset going to be a fantasy land, you know, uh, 10, 15, 20, 30. I don't know how many years from now we're going to look back and be like, damn, I, I long for the day when it was much more simplistic, which frankly, we already say that, you know, we already say, gosh, what was it like before the internet? Gosh, what was it like before television, before cell phones, you know, all this stuff. And it was always much more simplistic. Mm -hmm. There's not there's not been a generation that hasn't said that going back 100 years, 200 years. It's just that um, I think that's one of the biggest takeaways from today is like open your damn eyes, like pay attention. Uh, but but then again, and the last thing I will say and, and have you guys comment on, though, is is we are we're heading out of a tough year into a potentially tougher year yeah. yes. as a real estate community who literally needs to survive, decide if this is where I need to be. What would you say to that agent? Who's like, gosh, it's, you know, uh, yeah, I can waste my time paying attention to something that I don't know when's coming, or I need to focus on survival and supporting my family. What, what would you say to that in the last five minutes that we have? I think it's all, I, I gotta say, like, it takes me a second to understand what Sheila's saying. I think it's all about eyeballs. Like I, as we're wrapping up an hour and like, oh, Sheila's right. Like my own commitment to myself is to get in front of my camera on a daily basis all the time and just crank out content based on the stuff that I know and just share that, like to get business in the door for mortgages, right? And that's separate from consortia. 
that's just my own goal as a practitioner. I want to be relevant. I like making sausage. Like I like putting people in houses. I have two closings this week, like back to back. Nothing feels better than that. So I, what I know, want to go and teach people how to get into houses. So that's my own personal goal. And I'll say this, maybe I'm a little ahead of myself. Um, there is a family office that we've coached, that I've coached for years. And I'm like, this is what it's like. This is Fannie Freddie. This is what HOAs are like. This is what multifamily, because they need people who actually know the laws, right? Codify the laws, know the laws. They just partnered and will have equity in a media company that will go directly into your home. And all they are going to talk about in this media company is consortia and blockchain. Think about that. Like that's a family office. Guys, family offices, if you don't know, minimum check size is $50 million. Most family offices that I work with are billion dollar family offices. Yes, like the names that you're thinking of. Yes, family offices. So it's all about eyeballs. Like just from like a common level, I'm a nobody. I'm just gonna turn on my camera and start talking about mortgages or talking about how to buy a house, right? Like, boom, nothing fancy. I'm even gonna do it. I refuse to buy a fancy camera. I'm gonna do it on my phone. So I would say that's what's, I'd say if you need help in this and Jeff, Jeff didn't ask us to plug him today, but it's really true. Like it's all about the media for family offices, billion dollar family offices are buying a TV station, a media channel for consortia to go out there. They're probably thinking about it the right way. Like how do you educate people? Mm. Do that in your own community, right? The people, you know, on Facebook and Instagram. Jeff can help you. Jeff, Jeff is the God of this. So yeah, he's the master. <laughs> we do it. Okay. Uh, I mean, thank you for, thank you both for saying that that was not, this was not premeditated. Uh, but what they are saying is essentially establish it's called parasocial relationships and you have the ability to do it exponentially on social. And uh, it's not actually, if, if Teresa comes to me and I think at some point we've talked off offline, I would say, don't just go on there and talk about mortgages because you won't get the eyeballs if you do that. Exactly. Um, nobody's interested in that. They want to know, they actually, they're more interested in probably the, the, the car conversations you're having with your son. Like that's reality. That's relatable. That's interesting. Maybe humorous, um, humorous, and, absolutely. Yeah, entertain. Yeah. And just what I talk about with my kids is you're going to get it. I, I actually want help on how to do that. I don't know if I can hold it with my hand and drive, or if I'm going to get pulled over for a ticket, but I do want to start doing that this year. And, and you're yeah. going to laugh. You're going to, when you oh, hear it's hilarious. Good idea. She has us on when she's in the car with the kids. <laughs> I want to see this. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. Awesome. But yeah. But you'll be proud. She actually has like set up a studio. She, yeah, she's, we got her it. hooked her up. She's like, she's committed to this, Jeff. You finally convinced her that. Out. Uh, damn time. Yes. I know. I know. I learned the business from my sister who is 40 years older than me. And all she did was pick up the phone and answer the phone. So this camera stuff, wow. being yeah. afraid of, I don't, I don't want to see myself. I don't want to hear my voice. I'm so self-conscious. What am I going to talk about? That's me. Yeah. That's me. everyone. It's everyone. everyone. I, and, and that's, that's another conversation for another day. How your parents uh, had kids 40 years apart. That's crazy. I, I have them 20, uh, 18 years apart and I think I'm crazy. So, wow. Talk about crazy. Awesome. Ladies, uh, we got to wrap up. We're at the hour. Uh, I think we teed up some conversational pieces for the next one. Thank you guys for joining today and um, look out for Barry Habib on Friday and look out for us Ooh. again next month and go watch the recording. It's on YouTube. You can see it in the Facebook group. I'll share it over to the public group. Uh, so thank you. This You're is fun. Boss. Love you, Jeff. Love you, Jay. Merry Christmas, you everybody. Time.